In this video, we will analyze and exploit another server-side template injection vulnerability, but this time it will be against a Java application, which is Confluence. Confluence is one of the most popular documentation tool out there. It also has several features and integration, which makes it more popular among different companies. In order to develop a proper exploit script, we will follow the technical analysis from Trend Micro. I found some nuances on the analysis, so we will discuss it further in this video as well. The attack here is not complicated to execute compared to my previous videos. But after watching this, you will have a good base understanding about Java frameworks and how attackers target its templating engine to gain remote code execution. And as a bonus, I will share a really good vulnerability scanner I came across when doing my research. Let's digest the introductory paragraph of the technical analysis. The first technology involved is Object Graph Navigation Language. This allows accessing and manipulating Java objects dynamically in a much simpler way. For example, look at this small Java class called Person. If we create an object and try to access any private property we will get an error. We need a getter method to allow us to access it. One benefit of expression language like OGNL is it eliminate boilerplate code like this. Instead of using different methods to access an object's property, it allows them to be accessed in dot notation. Later, you will see this being used in our exploit code. There is another terminology that you may not be familiar yet, which is Apache struts. This is a kind of MVC framework. It is an architectural pattern that is commonly used for applications that requires user interaction. The model is the data part, so think of it like the database. The view is where the user can interact with the application, and the controller is the one that links the two. This is just the back-end logic that controls the flow of application. It is also worth noting that the Equifax breach was mentioned here. This is one of the largest data breach in history, which exposed around 140 million personal information. Attackers also exploited a vulnerability in Apache struts via an OGNL expression, which led to a remote code execution. So if you see, this expression language really has a bad history. Although it provides a lot of benefits, it also has a huge security implication if not handled properly. So in summary, Confluence, a popular documentation tool, uses Apache struts in the backend. Apache struts uses OGNL as an expression language. Knowing OGNL can be exploited, attackers leverage it to trigger a server-side template injection. Question is, where is it and how does it exactly happen? Since the vulnerability will allow us to do a remote code execution, it makes sense to just create a reverse shell exploit rather than executing commands one by one. This will save us time in going inside the target. Landing inside the target shell is our main goal anyway, so let's just go straight in automating that process. If you watch some of my previous videos, most of the time I create an exploit class. That class will perform the different methods for exploiting the target. This time, let's just use normal Python functions. There is really no correct way of doing this, but I want to show you other options. Let's create three functions one for sending our payload, another one for starting the reverse shell listener, and last will be for setting up an HTTP server for the reverse shell binary. The first function we need to build is the RCE function. In order to do that, we need to understand the exploit payload and where to inject it. As per technical analysis, it is as simple as sending a post request with the following parameters. Let's analyze one by one. First thing we need to understand is that this path must be accessible without any authentication. That means we don't need to prefetch any cookies or session keys. This makes our exploit much more simpler 
as we don't need to handle any HTTP sessions on our script. If the server returned a 404 or any other response indicating that the path is not present, then the server might not be vulnerable. Let's have a closer look. Files ending in .vm are Java template files, which is also obvious by the looks of the path on where it is stored. Like any other programming language, Java has various templating engines. Can you guess which one we will exploit today? If you guessed it correctly, this is using Apache Velocity templating engine. Later, we will come across another templating engine, which is crucial in triggering our remote code exploit. It populates the template base from different values. The crucial part here is that there is a user parameter that is not sanitized properly. This is the entry point of our attack, which you will see in a bit. If you recognize it, this is an OGNL expression which has a history of some high-profile vulnerabilities which we discussed in the previous section. Both get text and find value are dangerous functions where you can easily break out. These functions are also categorized as dangerous sinks. That means they can receive unsanitized events and process it without restrictions. So far, we have discussed different technologies, and I know it might be still confusing to you. To recap, Confluence uses Apache struts in the backend. Then as a templating engine, it uses Apache Velocity. Both of these Apache projects are using OGNL expressions. Let's go and take a look at the post parameter we need to send to the target. I know this is intimidating at first, but we will break it down so we can understand it. There are two post parameters here, the label and POC. The label is the entry point of our attack, which is also the one you see from the vulnerable code a while ago. When analyzing exploit payloads, I always try first to simplify the expression. For example, we are seeing a lot of these characters. These are Unicode point representation for apostrophe. This is a common bypass technique when doing OGNL injections. You can see that they are used to enclose functions or group of strings that are maliciously injected as part of the payload. There are also some few URL encoded strings that we can simplify. Percent 2B is an encoded form of plus sign, but plus sign is also another way of URL encoding a space. So there seems a double encoding technique being used here. With most of the weird looking characters out of the way, let's focus now our attention on the first post parameter. Request is an OGNL map, which is similar to dictionary in Python. It turned out that if we try to access this key, it will allow us to access more functions. One of them will be the dangerous sync we just discussed a while ago, which is find value. So basically, this whole expression is used to invoke further OGNL functions. This series of functions is similar on what they call a gadget chain. We know that the find value is dangerous function, but what harm can it do? It can be used to access any arbitrary parameter supplied by the attacker. In this example, we have a parameter called POC. This is a parameter that is not recognized by the application. That means we can name it anything we want. Putting zero as index means we are accessing the first item in the list. These curly braces is an empty map, which means we are instructing find value to prevent resolution of other variables. Honestly, I'm not 100% sure the inner workings of it, but I noticed that when I don't include an empty map, my exploit doesn't work. So in summary, the first parameter is used as a gadget chain to invoke a second parameter. In theory, we can just put everything inside one parameter, but OGNL expressions have size limit. That means if we put a very long expression, it will just break our payload, making our attack useless. The second parameter consists of another gadget chain. It first invoked the Apache strut servlet. In other words, we are executing a web server function. In this case, we are setting an arbitrary header to the request. That function will allow us to chain another expression, which is to trigger another templating engine, which is free marker. For some reasons, free marker has functions that allows executing system commands. But why do we need to trigger another templating engine rather than just using Apache Velocity? Well, I think it's because it's a lot more easier to do in free marker and makes the payload shorter. Based from my testing, this payload can still be made shorter. Let's go to the terminal and see.
Now that we can trigger a remote command to the target, the next steps will be straightforward. As mentioned on the previous section, we will leverage this exploit to establish a reverse shell connection. The tricky part is what kind of reverse shell we will use. In theory, we can use the common reverse shell payloads you see in the internet, but there may be some complications if we go that route. For example, sometimes the target uses a different shell other than bash, or sometimes there are limitations on accessing the TCP sockets under slash dev. Since Confluence is a Java application, we can make use of a Java reverse shell. In this manner, we are certain that it will work since we know that it is capable of running any Java programs due to the presence of Java binary. So our strategy is to generate a Java reverse shell using MSF Venom, serve it through our HTTP server, and force the target to run it. Once the victim runs the jar file, we will catch the connection using our listener. Lastly, since we are dealing with different network connections to the target, we might need to run some of them on their separate thread so it will not block the other tasks.
Before we end this video, I will share a tool that I came across during my research. That tool is Nuclei Vulnerability Scanner. It works on templates which describes the vulnerability you want to scan. For example, we can pass the CVE number as a command line parameter. Then, of course, we need to pass the target. In this demo, I will also pass the entire request through our burp proxy so we can inspect the payload later. You can see here that it detected our target as vulnerable. It also uses same path, which is the Apache Velocity template, which same as we used on our script. This tool can also perform other type of scan, such as fuzzing the target. Feel free to explore on your own. Let's go to Burp and see how the payload looks like. The exploit signature is very similar to our script. Let's send this to compare. Then let's also send the one from our exploit. Let's compare by words. The left side is from Nuclei, while the right is from our exploit. Nuclei invoked the strut servlet function, but we didn't have it on our script. We just invoked the free marker template utility directly. I just found this out when developing the script when trying to understand the exploit format. So, if you are developing exploits, feel free to play around and experiment. You will be surprised to find something that is not included in the technical analysis. I hope you learned something in this video. If you find this valuable, please hit the like button and subscribe to support my channel.